thanks for joining me. A little bit of Woodford Reserve here. Great bourbon. If you were sitting across from me right now, I'd probably say something like, you know, what you're doing as a leader really, really matters. But are you making it harder than it needs to be? Let's talk a little bit about one of the small changes that you and I can make that make a big difference right away. And that's this thing called drama. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So, all right, let's back up and talk about this just a little bit. The, uh, the idea I wanna share with you is that the single most toxic thing in any workplace is a thing called triangulation. That's where one person gets frustrated with another and instead of talking directly to that person, they go talk to somebody else. That's a triangle. Person A goes to, goes to B about C. Pretty straightforward, except that it is incredibly destructive. When that occurs, we actually break the very thing, corrode, break, rot, the very thing that makes all organizations work. Software doesn't make your enterprise work. Tools don't make your enterprise work. Money doesn't make it work. What makes it work is trust. All those things are just tools that we use along the way after trust has been established. When trust is eroded, then everything is paralyzed and we have to rely a whole lot more on things like policy. We have to rely a whole lot more on telling people what to do. The single most destructive behavior in any workplace is a thing we call triangulation. That is so destructive because it not only messes with the person who's doing it and the person who listens to it, but with the person who doesn't even know what's going on. Here's how it works. If I'm frustrated with you and I go talk to somebody else about you, I have made up a story in my mind that I'm the hero and you're the villain and this person's gonna come over here and join my way of thinking. I'll justify my conversation with her about you even though it's just pure gossip and it's drama, even, even though it's all those things, I'll justify the, my behavior because uh, uh, I'll, I'll say things like, you know what, um, I'm, just, uh, I'm just trying to get feedback. I'm just trying to get understanding about why you're acting the way you are, but I'm talking to this person over here. It's actually really, really destructive. I'm twisting how I see things so that I can talk to somebody else about you. Why do you think I picked that person, by the way? I picked that person because she or he was more likely to help me feel good than actually solve the problem. I'm not gonna go pick somebody over here who's gonna say, wait a second, I don't want anything to do with that. I'm not gonna pick one of your friends to talk to you, to, about, uh, uh, to talk about you. I'm gonna pick this person over here who will listen to me. I might even start that conversation by saying something like, you're the only one who can really understand. <laughs> and then I'll unload my perspective on what it is about you that frustrates me. It's a really destructive behavior. What happens is I change how that person thinks about you because I'm only telling part of the story. And I change eventually how that person thinks about me because I do it. if I do it with them, I'll do it to them. And it won't take them long to figure that out too. The bonds of trust are eroded whenever that takes place. Why do we triangulate? Because it's easy. There's no other answer. Even though I come up with all sorts of justification behind why I triangulate, the only reason I do it is because it's easy. I want to feel better. I don't want to solve the problem. I just want to feel better. That's why it's so absolutely destructive. And usually in order to get that person to come along with me, to believe that stuff about you that I want them to believe, I will inflate parts of the story and deflate other parts of the story. I'll edit this into a well-woven, tense drama so that that person comes with me in my thought process and turns and looks at you too and goes, ooh, what's up with him? That's called triangulation. It's destructive. All right, you, you get that, no big surprise. It's just really hard to break because I'm convincing and because that person that I go to to talk about you, that person over there, kind of wants to be helpful. That's why I picked that person. They wanna be somebody who's seen as a helpful person. They want to be liked by me, I'm right in front of them, and they wanna be helpful. So. I'm gonna pick that person on purpose. So they're gonna have a hard time with this. 
You don't even know it's happening yet, by the way. I haven't even told you. I just smile, and they say, how's your day? And I say, fine. The thought bubble above my head is, I'm going to get you. So I'm going to go to that person and create a triangle. You can see how destructive that is. How does this stop? Let's change it up a little bit. Let's make you the person that I'm coming to to talk about somebody else over here. Let's say I, wanna, I want to gossip with you. Oh, of course, I won't use the word gossip. I'll say share. I'll say get feedback. I'll say I need to learn. I need some understanding. I need some advice, right? All those wonderful words, which are perfect for workplace words. I'll use all those words to try to get you to lean in and listen to me when I gossip about that person over there. How do you deal with this? All right, let me suggest that the moment you discover I'm coming to you to gossip about that other person over there, you interrupt me. Now your mama, she actually raised a polite person, so you probably don't interrupt people, but now's the time to learn that skill. Soon as you figure out that I'm talking about that person over there who's not in the room, and I've sidled up to you, and I kind of shrunk down and looked over my shoulder and said, got a minute? Soon as you figure out I'm talking about that person over there, stop me. Like this. Put your hand up. Say, wait, let me ask you a question. Now, I'm going to see your hand, and I'll wait. And you're going to ask me a question. Here's the question. You need to ask me, have you talked with him about that yet, directly? Oh, well, that'll be a surprise to me because I haven't. But I'll probably say something, oh, well, I tried, or he's too hard to talk with, or I can't ever get a hold of him, or his, his personality is awful, or, or whatever. I'll come up with some excuse, and then I'll take a breath and leap back into my story. Now, it's important that you don't let me tell the story, because if you'd let me tell the story, I will mess with your brain. That's why I picked you, because you're open. I'll mess with your brain just a little bit just enough to throw some seeds of doubt in there and then the trust between the two of you, which might be just real small at this point, will be broken. It's really tragic, so stop me. So step one, wait, have you talked with him about that? I'll make some noise, you need to say the next step. Here it is, you need to go talk directly with him about that. Well, I won't like that very much at all. Oh, well, I'll try to talk with you some more about it. Stop me again. If I'm a member of your team, take it the third step. Say, when are you going to talk with him about that? And don't let me off the hook. Now, I have a couple of choices. I can either build a bridge and get over it, or I can go talk to that person. Oh, but wait, there's a third choice. I'm going to go to somebody else over here to triangulate about him. And I'm going to throw you in the mix, too. Now, what if we have the kind of intentional culture at work where when I come to you, you stop me and send me back to him. I get frustrated. I don't even want to go there because all I want is to feel better. I don't want to fix it. I just want to feel better. What if then I go to another person over here and that person says to me the same thing. Wait, did you talk directly with him? I'm going to connect the dots and I'm going to realize that's not how we work around here. That's not how it actually works. I can't, I can't get anywhere by gossiping about people and I'll be stopped in my tracks. And I'll either stop gossiping or I'll go somewhere else. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The best possible outcome is I will get the chutzpah to go talk directly with him about my frustrations. And then we'll have a chance, at least a chance, to absolutely work it out. This is a really important discipline to apply in any workplace. Really important to do this. Here's a sidebar. It's likely that if you're listening to this, you are a leader or you are a manager, or you have a supervisory responsibility. And so there's something about your position in your organization that makes people come to you because you are in some way in their mind above them hierarchically. So it's likely that if you're in that role and somebody comes to you in the role you're in, let's call it supervisor just for fun, you're the supervisor of that person. So they're gonna to come to you to tattle on that person, so you are supposed to go over and fix it. The same rules apply, exactly the same rules apply. So if I come to you to talk about him, you stop me, same way, hey wait, let me ask you a question. Have you talked directly with him about that yet? And I go, oh, I have a run, I'll make a noise, and then you say, what, what? How about if we get him in here right now and let's talk, don't hear the story, stop me. Pick up the phone, 
dial his extension, I don't know, 666, whatever his extension is, get him to come in the room, and I'm going to be pretty tense about this right here and right now. So that he's in a room when I'm telling the story. Guaranteed, my story will be much more accurate when he's in the room than when he's not in the room. That will only have to happen once or twice. And the word will, the word will get around that you don't triangulate with you as a supervisor. It just simply doesn't work. So remember this, it is something that is the most toxic behavior in any workplace whenever we triangulate. Break that triangle when someone comes to you to talk about somebody else. You might have some fun with this. Is it, are we planning a birthday party for that person? Ah, oh, no, no, okay, then wait. You need to talk directly with that person. In some other videos, we'll talk a little bit about what to say when you go directly with that person so that they get it. How do you deal with people who are hard to approach? We'll talk a little bit about that. How do you deal with people when you're so angry and frustrated that you need to be able to communicate calmly and clearly? We'll talk a little bit about that in a follow-up video to this. How do you actually make that triangle direct communication so that it works and works really, really well? A small change that you can make that makes a big difference right away. Hey, you're doing good work. Thanks for joining me. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, you want to see more of this stuff, hit the subscribe button and then that icon, that little bell icon, so you'll be notified whenever new stuff comes out. You're doing good work. Keep up the good work. Thanks for spending time with me. Take care.